How lucky was Joe Cata in 2009? How good was Joe Cata in 2009? I'm Matt Berkey, and I'll break down Cata's final table run on this edition of 2020 Hindsight. First hand of heads up here, we're gonna see Darwin Moon pick up pocket queens, a premium on the button. Leaning into the volatility of putting Cat to big decisions is likely gonna be his best path to victory. Luckily for Moon, Cat wakes up with a relatively premium hand himself, pocket nines. He's gonna to elect to raise to three and a half times the big blind at three and a half million. I think this is a little bit small. Something in the neighborhood of four to five big blinds feels a lot more comfortable. I think Kata is very happy to play for stacks with a hand like this. Had Moon actually opened to his usual two and a half or three X, I think we would have saw Kata three bet to about 10 X where Moon would have moved it in and Kata would have most likely just called. Moon actually decides to, my surprise, just slow play the Queens even further, electing to just call. Now again, I think this is a bit of a mistake, but maybe less of one than not opening originally preflop. In any event, Moon lets him off the hook and elects to just flat call the queens, basically disguising a little bit of his limping range. We see a flop of king of spades, three of spades, two of diamonds, and this is where things get weird. Cata continuation bets for three and a half million. On a texture like this, I would like to see him go maybe a little bit smaller, just in the sense that he's in a way ahead, way behind situation pretty often against Moon. And a texture like this isn't really gonna touch Darwin's limp call range all that much. But as I kind of mentioned, things get a little bit weird. We're actually gonna see Darwin elect to flop raise here, which is about as non-standard as it gets. The only hands that would really wanna to choose to flop raise on this particular texture would be hands like pocket threes, pocket twos, and then maybe some king x, specifically king x of diamonds, as you would wanna be protecting your strongest hands by having some other hands of showdown value in there. Now, from the bluffing side of things, we'd want to be using combo draws. So maybe hands like four or five of spades, ace five of diamonds, things of that nature that can potentially improve to nutted hands, but also put Kata in a situation where he doesn't really have auto calls. Moon chooses the size of 10 million, and now Kata is just kind of in the cage. His hand just fares to be best here. It looks like Moon is over bluffing this spot because it's not really a scenario that should lend itself to many raises. However, it's very costly every time Cat is wrong. Again, this whole hand is kind of messed up to begin with because Moon elected to limp call with a range of hands that Cata isn't really able to kind of quantify at this point. When things get this weird, I like to kind of disobey what theory is telling me to do. So I don't really mind just passing on a very unclear spot versus an amateur and waiting for better situations to pounce. With that said, I don't fault Joe for calling. Again, nines does stand to be the best hand in a situation where we can't really know what Moon is choosing to do this with. The turn ace of diamonds to me signifies a complete and utter shutdown for Kata. Now I know that he probably sees this as a range card for himself, but we have to double back to what the hell was Darvin raising the flop with. If it wasn't a king, then it's very likely to be a hand like four five or the nut flush draw both of which have improved now to very strong holdings. So of course, Kata elects to check over to Moon, and Moon doesn't slow down one bit with his pocket queens. He elects to bet just under half pot, 10 million into 27.3, putting Kata to a decision of how he wants to proceed forward. Should Kata call, there will be a little bit over 47 million in the pot, and the remaining chip stacks are gonna be somewhere around 35 million. Kata does elect a call, I guess putting Moon strictly on spades that aren't not flush draws. This feels like a lot of throwing good money after bad in a scenario that we've been put into by an amateur player where we can't really get inside of his mind. On the River King of Clubs, Joe actually should be feeling a little bit better about his hand. Perhaps Darwin will just shut down the bluff at this point and pocket nines will win some of the time. The action goes check check and Darwin's gonna show him the bad news that he does in fact have pocket queens good enough to take this pot down. This next hand is a cross between random button clicking and a thing of beauty. Obviously we lack the context of all the hands that are being played in between these highlights, but I really love the gumption that Moon demonstrates here with just a piece of cheese hand. 
At 87 big blinds effective, we're going to see Kata open the King Jack offsuit to 2.5 million. Moon is going to defend Queen of Hearts, 8 of Spades, and we're going to see a flop of Jack of Clubs, 6 of Spades, 5 of Diamonds. Moon's going to elect a check, and Kata is going to elect to bet 3.5 million into 5.3. This is a little bit on the large side. On this type of texture against an opponent who is relatively wide, I think it's fine to size up a little bit. It's unlikely Darwin's going to fold any of his 5x or 6x. And really, you can just balance this by bluffing at a little bit cheaper of a price without him really seeing through it much. That said, it triggered something in Darwin. He decided to go for it. We see Darwin elect a check raise to 8.5 million with stone nothing. Unfortunately for him, Joe has a jack here and certainly isn't folding to this check raise. I think it's reasonable for Kata to just call. Obviously, he's going to be in a way ahead, way behind situation here at a pretty high frequency. Either Moon is going to have a hand like two pair plus, or he's just going to have a lot of bubbles, be it an open ender for some equity, or a hand like he has, which just has three outs to a queen. That queen does come through on the turn, however, when the queen of diamonds hits the board. Moon is very quickly going to elect a check, and I actually don't mind this. I think that had he missed the turn, he would have to follow through with a check at a pretty high frequency as well. So when you improve the top pair, continuing through a passive line isn't really that bad of an event. Kata, recognizing that he's still in a way ahead, way behind situation, elects to check back with his now middle pair, good kicker. With the pot being 22.3 million and the river two of hearts, Kata is certainly destined to pay off a bet here. Now, Moon should be pretty dense to bluffs at this point, and his value should be very polar in nature. What I mean by that is he should land on this river with basically sets and a whole lot of nothing. So I'd like to see him size up a little bit here, despite the fact that he has a hand that doesn't really qualify as either nothing or a nutted hand. What he should recognize is that a queen is really, really, really strong here whenever we're examining through the lens of heads up ranges. I think something in the neighborhood of half pot to two thirds pot would have been pretty good. Darwin bets 7.25 million into 22.3, laying Kata a ridiculously good price of four to one. Kat is obviously resigned to his fate. He's happy to call it this price. He would have been happy to call it a much larger price. I can't imagine that he thought he was going to be losing this hand at a very high frequency. Go to Queen. Well, we made it longer than I thought we would. I figured you'd have me on the rail by now. Playing well. <laughs> You're playing really well. Thanks. You are too. The momentum of this match has swung heavily in the Lumberjacks' favor. Darvin Moon now out to a 2-1 to one chip lead, out chipping Kata 133.65 to 61.15. Blinds are now up to 600k, 1.2 million, and we're going to see Kata open the button with Jack-9 offsuit to 3 million. Moon is going to elect to defend with the 8-7 of spades. I think this hand could go either way. I would like to see him turn up the aggression a little bit pre-flop, but continuing through a call, especially when you have the chip lead, can't really ever be a negative thing. We see a flop of 10 of clubs, 5 of diamonds, 9 of hearts. And with the pot of 6.4 million, the action is going to go check, check. The turn 10 of diamonds is going to make Kata feel pretty good about his 9 and put him in a way ahead, way behind situation. Darwin's going to elect to check again, and Kata is going to go for about a half pot bet of 3 million. I think this is fairly reasonable. He should have a lot of confidence that his 9 is best. Facing a half pot bet, Moon, to my surprise, just goes for it here. I'm all in. All in. So he's essentially putting in 50 big blinds on this turn, drawing dead to a jack or a six. I think in his mind, he felt like Kata could only call if he has a 10. And considering that he checked back the flop, he almost never has a 10. First of all, a 10 doesn't necessarily want to shove as it's just smashing cat is range and it wants to extract value a check raise sure and all in not so much secondarily the bluffs that are available for darvin are just extremely extremely robust he could be doing this with all of his combo draws all of his diamond draws his eight sevens as he's so chosen to do so and he almost never has a better hand than a nine a lot of credit to joe Kata on the biggest stage in the world to have the wherewithal to see through this particular bluff in real time. This could have been a moment where he just absolutely buckled under the pressure 
and said like, look, I don't know what this guy is doing. It all seems so illogical to me, but I don't want to call with a nine, be wrong and be drawing dead. Instead, he just buckled up and said like, look, if he got me, you got me. And he elects to call down with the jack nine high, which proves to be the best hand at this point. We now see a chip lead pot at 122.3 million and Darwin Moon is going to need a jack or a six in order to win the main event. Yes. Darwin. The river three of hearts is going to shift the stack sizes in Kata's favor. He's now going to double through to 122 million versus Darwin's remaining 72.5 million. Johnny backs the legendary backer, Joe Kata's stake horse at the time, thrilled with the call, thrilled with the double up, lending his support. It's good bluff though, or it's good semi bluff. Good call, Joe. Good it's call. It's good play, honestly. It was you're playing awesome. It's fun. It's fun for me. I'm learning so much off you. <laughs>